crazy thumbnails always get the views. Hi fans of high quality entertainment. At first I was go going to do, you know, your typical top 10 list. And this one was based on what I feel are 10 uh, CDs in my collection that most of you either have never heard of or don't have in your own CD collection. But I expanded it to 16 albums. And so I'm curious, out of these 16 al albums, or albums, how many of them you've heard, even like one or two songs, or you actually have in your CD collection? I would be very surprised if anyone has more than maybe, maybe five of these CDs in their collection. And I do know that, you know, some people marvel at, you know, my CD collection. I've, I've got more over there, too, along with my DVDs and Blu-rays. But, you know, I've got... And then I've got some CDs in my bedroom. But, trust me, compared to other people I've seen online that collect CDs and vinyl, that ain't much. Uh, like, thousands. I, I don't know how anybody can have... Like, you know, a wall that just filled with two or three thousand CDs. I, I barely have time to listen to what I have here. Uh, but I keep buying more. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, these aren't in any order or anything. So these are 16 CDs in my CD collection that I don't think most of you would have in your collection, or have heard of even. And I've probably talked about almost every single one of these albums in some past rock music vlog. So first off, this is a box set, but I'm going to go with a particular album that if you've... Also, you know, if you've never heard any of these albums, I hope some of you actually check them out on YouTube or if they're on Spotify. So this is a box set called Atomic Rooster Sleeping for Years, 1970 to 1974. Uh, Vincent Crane, the great keyboardist, he was the main guy, and then, of course, other band members came and went. But my, well, my two favorites are In Hearing of Atomic Rooster, and their debut was great too, which is in this box set. But uh, I really love Death Walks Behind You, and that's, you know, that's the original album cover, even though this is talking about more than that, because it's, it's a box set, so it goes into the next studio album. Uh, yeah, uh, taken from the album In Hearing of Atomic Rooster, so side one of In Hearing of is on this too. But this... Just check out, if you love uh, heavy music, heavy uh, progressive hard rock, check out the song, Death Walks Behind You. It has a great guitar riff, and I think if you're a fan of heavier rock music, and you've never heard Atomic Rooster, and especially Death Walks Behind You, you will love it. That's one. Number two, this is a band that was so far ahead of their time, it's kind of, it's almost freaky. Because this was recorded in 1966. Monks. Black Monk Time. There they are. And yes, they... They were... I forget the whole story, but they were in the army or something, and then they formed a band and cut their hair and everything. <laughs> but seriously great musicians. A real punk, like 1966 punk rock, crazy, aggressive. Uh, this one is a really nice... Uh, a really nice book club. But like I said, I've talked about probably all of these albums in various videos, but I just wanted to 
get the least gnome out there again. I one of my favorite things about doing these rock music vlogs is when somebody checks out an artist that I talk about or an album and they end up becoming a fan. That's happened a lot of times with uh, Sparks and even Blue Easter Cult, the Beatles, seriously, you know, some younger person. So for Black Monk Time, basically any song on this, just type in Black Monk Time on YouTube or uh, I, I'm not sure if they're on Spotify, but a great album. A Canadian band. So some of these are a little better known than others, but still they weren't like huge sellers. So, you know, if you talk to your typical ACDC fan or Bad Company and you say Clatu, some of them might scratch their head. <laughs> but yeah, Clatu. Uh, to I only am familiar with their first two albums, uh, 347 Eastern Standard Time and Hope. And the one I'm, I love them both, so either one. But Hope, when it came out in, I think it was 1977, I was disappointed in it. And I never even really gave it a chance. I listened to it once or twice. I thought it was way too poppy and uh, sappy, I guess. But my opinions changed on it through the years. And it's also considered uh, pretty much a progressive rock classic by a lot of prog fans so but like i said either either one of those but especially uh hope i hope you check it out thank you once again another band i've got two i've got all three of their first three albums and i know that they in the last couple of years they did release a new album finally I never did check out. Deaf School. I said Deaf School. Here's their first two albums. Uh, Don't Stop the World and Second Honeymoon, which I believe... I always get those two confused. I believe this was their first. The band. And... Uh, yeah... Uh, I believe his name is Cliff. Here it is here. Is it Clive Lang Langer or Cliff Langer? Anyway, he went on to uh, work with Elvis Costello and become quite the producer. But I love their, their look too. Of course, I'm showing the, the, the wrong album. The one I, I love the most is their third and final for years and years and years. Uh, English Boys Working Girls with Betty Bright, one of the singers. I love the, I just love the, the look of the band too. Almost like a Sparks kind of uh, deal. You know, just great personalities. Yeah, Clive Langer. Fine, yeah. So there. So this is like, I, I guess you kind of a bit like Roxy music, spark, sparks kind of uh, f fun, rock, uh, art rock. Hard to describe some, some music, but it's just, uh, I never, every, I don't play this album very often, but when I do, I totally enjoy the whole album. Deaf School. Check it out. Now this is one of the more familiar bands that some of you or most of you or all of you have heard of. But their debut album has always been my favorite. The Tubes. One of my favorite debut albums ever with uh, one of their biggest, you know, they had more commercial songs later on that were hits. But one of their Best known songs is White Punks on Dope, the final song on this, but the whole album is great fun. And it has one of the weirdest intros on an album, too. It freaks me out every time I hear it. Next up, from Ireland, and the band starts with a U. 
No, it's not U2, it's undertones. That's right, the undertones. And this was their second last album with Fer Virgil Sharkey. And their first two were punk, pop, high energy, really great hooks. This one was a more mature recording. I know all about being mature. Yeah, there's their, the, their follow-up, because this is two albums in one, The Sin of Pride, which is good, but Positive Touch I absolutely love. It's more varied than their earlier albums, which, like I said, I love. And uh, one of my all-time favorite songs is on this. It is called Forever Paradise. And uh, I love Virgil Sharkey's vocals. It's an acquired taste, I guess. It's kind of like a Rod Stewart kind of a, a vocal that he has, but on the punkier side, I guess. What else here? Another band I've talked about more than once, and their first album, their first three albums, they're all fantastic. But I want to push today Wire 154, their third album, which, just like the Undertones, their first, especially their first album, was more uh, really quick, short punk songs. And this is more, they, they expand the sound more, kind of a Pink Floyd vibe, kind of like a, a mix between Pink Floyd and punk, I guess. And it's really well produced, and it's on the, I believe it's the Pink Floyd label, Harvest. And, uh, yeah. Great fun. Check it out. Do you have that in your CD collection? I bet you don't have this in your CD collection. It's a punk band, but they're more of a, uh, they, they don't, don't take themselves as seriously. It's more of a... a almost like a commercial punk band. The Vibrators, Pure Mania, their debut album. Uh, I love all the songs on this, but especially uh, Keep It Clean, You Broke My Heart, Stiff Little Fingers, which the band, Stiff Little Fingers, they name themselves after the, that, this Vibrator song. Uh, Wrecked On You, I Need a Slave, the whole album, great fun. Go check it out. It should be in your CD collection. And I am always going to uh, say good things about this artist, even though she gets a lot of hate, even, even today. But more so in the past. Uh, Yoko Ono, any of her uh, first solo albums, and this is the first one that was a... Uh, companion piece to John Lennon's Plastic Ono Band, same cover with them just reversed. And th this one is uh, really out there, some of it. But I love it all. I, I seriously do. I, I was, I've listened to this a couple of times in the last month. But that being said, my favorite track on this is Why with Killer out there, but still amazing guitar work by John Lennon. And of course, Ringo Starr on drums. He kills it, just like on the John Lennon Plastic Ono band album. Just great drumming on this and Klaus Vorman on bass. I love it. How do you pronounce this? Now, if you're a Yes fan, this should be in your collection. John Anderson's first solo album, Olias, Olias of Sun Hello, if that's how you pronounce it. I tried checking online and uh, on YouTube how to pronounce certain words, and then somebody said, That's not how you pronounce it. It's like, okay, whatever, I'll just give it my best shot. And this one, this is seriously, it's right up there with all of my favorite Yes albums. I've played this a lot. And what I love about it, it's just like my favorite Yes music. It's like, uh, there, there's parts that are good, 
really good. And then there's just certain parts that are just way above amazing. And that's how this album flows. It's, you know, it's, you don't just want to listen to one song from it. You want to listen to the whole album. I've talked about this probably too much, but Phil Collins, his first band was Art 2. There he is there. Once again, it's from, I think, 1969. And it's just a fun, lighthearted, progressive rock with great vocals, uh, great instrumentation. The production could be better, but overall, I really enjoy listening to this. The Eric Burden Band. This is a twofer. Has his stop album, which is good, it's okay. But Sun Secrets with the Eric Burden Band. This is a killer band. And uh, he does re recordings uh, of the animals. It's My Life. Uh, don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. Usually I don't like re recordings, you know, it's like. <laughs> They don't have any new original material, but this is great. He does a killer version of Ring of Fire. Uh, it's a great, great band. Uh, awesome guitar work and drums and bass and, of course, vocals by Eric Burden. Is that in your CD collection? We're almost done. One, two, three, four. Okay. Another Canadian band. And I know them. The Northern Pikes, they have a lot of great albums, but this is my favorite, Snow in June, which was a big seller here in Canada. And it has the huge Canadian hit, She Ain't Pretty, which is still played on the radio today. But they're, they're just a great pop rock band. Three great singers in this on this album. And uh, my favorite song on this is the song Snow in June, so check that out on the YouTubes. One more Canadian band. You've heard of them. The Guess Who. But have you heard some of their great albums? They have great singles, but they have also great albums. Rock. This was just, uh, it sounds like it was recorded live for the most part, and you know, they probably a little, little drinking and some other things <laughs> being partaked in the studio, but it's fun and uh, great vocals by Burden Cummings and Heartbroken Bopper. Just a killer. If you love great hard rock, that's one of the Guess Who's best hard rock songs with uh, great guitar work. And I love the Guess Who. Now this is so bad. It's, it, I guess it's comparable to the movie Plan 9 from Outer Space. There's fans of that movie because it's so bad, it's actually entertaining. Well, the Shags, philosophy of the world, you can tell by the cover <laughs> that they're not exactly <laughs> uh, Pink Floyd or Queen. But there's such an innocence because they're taking it seriously. And the songs end up, at first it's like cringy and oh my god, this is awful. But then you start to actually seriously be entertained and dare I say, enjoy it. So, and Frank Zappa was a fan. He thought they were better than the Beatles. I wouldn't go that far. And... One final one. Uh, these two got a bit of flack when they were in the uh, Mothers of Invention, Frank Zappa. You know, uh, their over-the-top humor and all their, that, their crude humor sometimes. But this, Moving Targets by Flo and Eddie. There's, this is another twofer. But it's this one here. Moving Targets, just great pop rock and not crude or anything, it's just like the turtles, I guess, but uh, yeah, some really, really great vocals and music on this, and 
So moving targets is something for you all to check out, and that's it. So that was, I, th I think I said 16 albums. How many of them are in your collection? And how many of those 16 have you actually heard of? You know, listened to? And that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a greater day. Check out my, my playlist here. Go. Go check them out.